Hi guys, welcome back. So we're here at Mobility Field Day. Actually, the event just ended, and uh, for a while we thought we would uh, record a couple of videos to give us, uh, to give you guys our two cents on some of the presentations. And uh, in this little clip, we wanted to talk about Celona. Uh, they came this morning and, and uh, presented on their CBRS private LT uh, solution, and they came with gear, which was fun. Yeah. Uh, they did some demos. They set up the entire network. Um, as part of the presentation and then they had us connect uh, you know giving us sim cards to put into our phones connect to the uh, CBRS network so it was uh, it was actually very entertaining yeah it was insightful and really cool to see the equipment and how it's set up because the presentation was a, a the demo itself was let me create mm -hmm. a CBRS network for you from scratch configure it and then you join to it And I think this was by far one of the best presentations that I've seen from any of the presenters for Mobility Field Day. Yeah, and I actually love it when uh, vendors, you know, have some something for us to do. Yeah. Like, you know, <laughs> engage us in, in their presentation and their demos, and it, it makes it a lot, uh, a lot more fun for us. We get our hands dirty a little bit uh, and better understand what they are offering. Yeah, what I think was really interesting, right? So JR was the one presenting, uh, they, they had a team and the equipment, it's all ready to go. I think they call it air kits. He had nothing configured, right? Mm -hmm. he, he logged in, was talking through us throughout the whole uh, presentation. So in under two hours, he got a private cellular network working under CBRS gave us SIM cards, I put one into my, my Apple iPhone and was able to connect to Solona, which I shared the screenshot. It mm -hmm. said network connected to Solona. And actually we didn't have to do anything. No, I just... You put the SIM card, card in, in and That's then it. you have your connection. Uh, what I actually did on my end is turn the Wi-Fi off. Yeah, I did that too, yeah. Yeah, so I could make sure it was connecting to the to their LTE, but then it just connects automatically, which is... And, and that's the whole message behind Solona in this presentation. It should be that easy to configure and deploy, roll out a, a Solona hardware and get private LTE working. And one thing they talked about as well is the fact that to get their solution up and, at, up and running, you can actually leverage your existing uh, switches that you have for your Wi-Fi access points and you can connect the CBRS APs right into your switches and power them from your switches. Um, and then you can even reuse some of your configuration, some of your VLANs, some of your policies on the uh, on the firewall uh, for all the traffic that's gonna come from the uh, CBRS uh, side of the network, which is which makes it very easy for us to understand right. how their solution is integrated in the network. And it makes you know way more sense than just trying to integrate 5G into like a their whole land. separate infrastructure. Yeah, which was some of the messaging we've heard before is you need to stage up completely separate infrastructure, new switches, mm -hmm. new routers, overlay everything. Yeah, yeah, it overlays and and it's not. Solana saying it's not that hard, and so we we're we're getting different messaging from different companies. So far, I like Solona's because it makes me want to mm -hmm. you know, deploy this. And uh, when the question was asked about coverage and the number of access points, we're, we're calling them access points. <laughs> mm -hmm. They're calling them. They're yeah, calling Solona's them calling points. it access points. There is different language. Um, I don't even know what it is. Enobi. You know, you know, yeah. I'm going to stick with access points. But in terms of comparing the number of access points that you would use versus Wi-Fi, it is much less hardware. Mm -hmm. And, and the mm -hmm. coverage is a lot wider for private LTE, private cellular. And I think that provides a, a very compelling use case for a lot of different industries like warehouses that have uh, you know, mission critical, uh, low latency, low latency mm -hmm. maybe some high bandwidth applications as well, but using a different medium for that traffic. So your handheld scanners or your automated guided vehicles, mm -hmm. you name it. Your cameras. Yeah, yeah, even cameras, which he tested in the in the video. So I highly encourage you to go check that video out. You can see the demo live in action. And um, why don't we talk about also micro slicing? Because I think that's an interesting technology. Yeah, so they they actually demoed it as well. And uh, 
the the idea behind if we want to kind of summarize it it's, it's kind of like QoS on CBOS yeah but you can actually you know dedicate uh, you know a part of the wireless uh, network just for one device or one set of devices uh, and they actually did that for you know a zebra tablet that they had running an iProf test um, and you could see that you know portion of the bandwidth was dedicated for that tablet regardless of what what we were doing yeah. otherwise so you could generate iProf left right center uh, from other devices but that you know that uh, tablet was still getting it was around like 40 meg I think of traffic uh, during the demo uh, because of the micro slicing and, and yeah. the QoS that works over the uh, the LTE. Yeah, so the micro slicing is part of the policy base uh, for your applications and devices. So you do have to set up device groups. You um, have devices that connect to this network. And then the micro slices can be for a specific type of device or an application. So like you said, they used a tablet, which was part of a different policy. And then for us, he, I guess JR set up a little access point um, that connected to his network, to that Salona network. A lot of us joined to that SSID, started doing speed tests, iPerf tests, and we did not see an increase in latency for the, the tablet that had dedicated bandwidth and, and, and they had to meet minimum latency requirements. Yeah, so that, that becomes really useful if you have like a, the mission critical networks, right? Yep. Uh, and you need to make sure that critical devices always get what they need to operate. And I think he mentioned cameras and stuff like this. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, that, 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 and it, it, it doesn't work like Wi-Fi where you no. can have QoS and Wi-Fi, but yeah. still. I can't dedicate like your laptop to yeah. have a minimum bit rate and latency requirements mm -hmm. um, because we're, it's a shared medium and it's not as uh, because it's it's what do they call it time division yeah uh, so it's like a token uh, devices yeah. get like a, sl a, a time to communicate or yeah. dedicated time so, so you have more, much more control from the infrastructure than exactly. we do in Wi-Fi yeah and they showed all the statistics as well if you're meeting those policies so uh, it's it's really quite uh, an improvement um, we're not really a journey for Solona because mm -hmm. they they were at the previous mobility field days too and they've done uh, live demos uh, or workshops at WLPC. So it's really good to see this in action. Um, I know I wanted to see it in action and try it for myself. And we even got to keep the SIM cards. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which I have no use for now. <laughs> Maybe one day, you don't know. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so if you want to watch the, the, the full video, the full uh, demo, you can head over to the Tech Field Day uh, YouTube channel and uh, you should find a playlist uh, called Mobility Field Day and uh, 7 and you'll find all of them. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you.